Hello everybody peeps and welcome to another edition of Beach Fishing Antics. Um, this is a really silly one, this one. Uh, this little video is completely inspired by um, a thread on World Sea Fishing Forums uh, about revitalising your black, your frozen black lug. Um, and it was originally put up on WSF by a guy called John Pye and has attracted loads and loads of comment. Um, now, given that um, a lot of the time I'm using frozen black lug, um, I don't have access to fresh bait. I live in Lincoln, so I'm not right on the coast. Um, and quite often when I do kind of get to dash off um, and, and have a bit of a fishing session, um, the bait that I've got in the freezer is frozen black. Uh, often stuff that I've picked up while I've been um, visiting family down in Kent and I had a bit of a session down there. So I try and bring a load back because it's really good quality bait. Um, but the problem with using frozen blacks is they're very floppy um, and you end up having to kind of whip them onto the hook with bait elastic and stuff like that otherwise they just squish down to the bottom of the hook um, a bit like a kind of baggy... Oh, I don't know. Um, I wanted to say something rude then. Um, probably best if I don't. Anyway, so I saw this thread on um, on WSF, as I said, uh, put up by a guy called John Pye, um, I think some time ago. It's attracted an awful lot of chat. Uh, and I thought I'd give it a go because um, next week we're, uh, we're off to Norfolk, going to be away for a week, hopefully do lots of fishing. And I'm going to be taking a load of frozen blacks with me. Um, and there is a microwave. So let's give it a go. Remember, I am doing this experiment so you don't have to. Although, I suspect that if it works, you're going to want to, and the divorce rate amongst shore anglers in the UK is going to go through the roof. But let's give it a go. So, the idea is, you defrost some of your frozen blacks. Now, what I've got here are some black lug that I got down in Kent. They've already been defrosted once, and then refrozen. So I'm just kind of, ooh, they're actually fairly small ones, these ones, so I don't kind of mind abusing them. But there's literally, I think it's about half a wrap. Um, yeah, it is literally half a wrap. Oh, that's quite a nice chunky one there. Um, that I had left over from the last session I had, which was on the Humber Wall, which you can see um, elsewhere on my site. So the idea being that you defrost your blacks, you put them on some fresh paper and you bung them in the microwave um, for just a few seconds. Now, the advice that John Pye gave on WSF, he had an 850 watt microwave apparently, and he reduced that to half power and then I think it was between 10 and 20 seconds. Now obviously every but his microwave is different. Ours is pretty old and beaten up. Um, but it's an 800 watt microwave. So this is kind of experimentation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try one at a time and just see what works. So there we go. That floppy, sticky, bleh, lugworm. So I'm just gonna stick it on this piece of paper here. I'm going to bung it into the microwave. Uh, I'm going to reduce the power down to... Oh, I can't do 50%, so 60%. <clears throat> we'll call that 60%. And I'm literally just going to start it and count the seconds and keep an eye through the kind of glass um, and see if I can work out what the hell's going on. So, well, it doesn't want to do that. Okay, let's give it 20 seconds and start. Oh, oh, oh! Right, okay, that was 10 seconds and stuff started happening. Oh my God! Okay, Whew. it did warn that that, 
that that was going to smell bad. Oh, it's really a good job that there isn't smell of vision, guys, because I can taste that. Right. Okay. Let's have a look at the worm. It's actually gone a little bit crispy. But it is firmer. So that's quite interesting. But it's a little bit... It's a little bit stiff. Oh! <coughs> Oh, I can still taste it. That's really revolting. Right. Okay, so that is actually a lot firmer than it was before, but it does feel a little bit kind of crispy on the outside. So we'll lay that to one side. And let's give another one a go. So we'll stick that in there. Maybe that was cooking a little bit too quickly. So what we'll do is let's cancel that setting. Uh, and we'll go down to 40%. <coughs> 10 seconds. Press start. Okay, stuff's happening. Oh, it makes really weird noises. Fortunately, the microwave, as you can see, is by the back door. Okay, right, that doesn't seem to have done an awful lot, so I think that's going to have to go back. Let's try reducing the power even more. Okay, again, that is definitely a bit firmer. It does feel slightly <clears throat> kind of crisp, but I, yeah, I mean, that's kind of, look. I can actually hold that up. So that is going to go onto the hook without any problems, and it won't need whipping up. Essentially, it feels like a slightly hollow tube. But that's definitely, that's definitely firmer. That's working. Let's look at the first one again. Essentially what it seems to do is kind of very slightly cook the outside. Right, okay, let's try this one. I, I mean, that's just, bleh. that's just not much copper at all, is it? You'd be kind of bang, bunging that on a hook with several other ones. It's only a small worm. So let's try it with that one. Ah. Uh, Pretty unpleasant. Okay. I think I think the problem. Oh no, 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 that's wrong. I think the problem in my microwave is essentially if you turn the power down, you're not actually turning the power down. What you're doing is it will then kick in at intermittent intervals, so it kind of slows the cooking process down and it, it doesn't kind of continually bombard what's in there. The trouble is because we I'm doing it for such short periods of time. That's not really helping me very much, but, um... Okay, so I've gone right down to what my microwave says, 20%. 10 seconds. Now, the worm actually leapt off the bit of paper there. Has that done anything? It's certainly looking a bit... Looking a bit firmer. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's really stinky. There we go, that's another, well, it's definitely firmer. It's gone a bit crispy on the tail. But yeah, 
Interesting. It's just kind of like, I mean, that's definitely firm. In it. <clears throat> now, I have seen another way of kind of revitalizing your, your lugworm is to pour some boiling water on them. Leave that for a few seconds and then cool that down by adding cold water. The, the problem that I have with that is that essentially the moment you put water on them, particularly hot water, you're going to you're going to be leaching all the kind of scent and everything out of the worm so that's what kind of made me think that this would be worth a try because you're not going to be doing that now one of the things that um was suggested on the original um forum post was that you soak these things in pilchard oil um first although it's not required it would just add some additional scent now um i know you can from some online bake companies you can get black lug oil um so it might be quite interesting to kind of maybe get hold of some of that and give that a go. So soak them into in the black lug oil, um, and uh, and that will just increase the amount of scent that you've got on there. So here we go. So this one's a bit kind of bigger and juicier, um, but as you can see, it's still frozen. It's very floppy. Um, again, you're going to have to kind of you know, it will just bag up onto the bottom of the hook if you if you hook that the way it is. So generally what we do is kind of, you know, fold it over and um, and whip it up with some bait elastic. Uh, so, okay, let's give that a go. So, um, cancel. 40%. 10 seconds. Press start. I don't know if you can hear the kind of popping noises that that makes, but then you do, oh, you do get a bit of smoke, and that is really <coughs> rather rank. Okay, now that's worked. That's not. That's not kind of completely crispy that's not crispy that one the other ones feel a little slightly crispier but it does feel slightly firmer so maybe that's really maybe that's all you need just to kind of give it that little extra bit of firmness that would now allow you to thread that on the hook now apparently what you can do is you do this to your lug um, and then you can actually refreeze that and supposedly they do stay that little bit stiffer um, and are reusable. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do with these fives. I'm, I'm just, like I said, they've already been defrosted once and refrozen, um, but it seems to be working. They are definitely, you see that's definitely kind of got a bit more about it. Um, I mean, that one certainly has. Like I say, it does feel a bit like a kind of hollow tube, but then obviously they're black, so they've been gutted when they were dug. Um, but I see no reason why, you know, you, essentially you've kept all the scent in there. So here we go for the last one. Tonker of a worm, this one. So. Stick it on the paper. I've still got the taste of that first one. That was <coughs> really rather disgusting. For goodness sake, don't do this when your wife's at home. It will go down like a sack of cement. Okay, power again. No, that's timer. Let's try this one at 40%. 10 seconds, press start. See it expanding through the window. There's the lethal smoke again. Oh, Jesus! It's evil. Right. There we go. That one's still fairly bad. It's actually ridiculously warm. Still a bit baggy, so what I'm going to try is um, <coughs> just give that one a little bit longer. <coughs> oh, 
Ay. Do you know what? I've actually got one of those industrial <coughs> mask things that I've used, um, that I bought when I was doing some airbrush painting. Um, <coughs> it might be a good idea to actually have put that on, although it would be a little bit hard to present a video if I was, um, if I was wearing one of those, because you wouldn't really hear what I was saying. Right, okay. So again, that's gone. That's definitely firmer. Uh, and I think that would definitely kind of thread onto a hook a little bit better. Um, I think perhaps the key thing is, is to go and grab a hook and a bit of snood line and actually see what one of these does when you actually thread it onto the hook. Uh, so, bear with me a moment. That's what I'm gonna go and do. Right, okay, here I am, I'm back again. So, let's have a look. I've got a nice simple rig. I've got a Wessex rig here, which, um, I actually removed the, the I'd already removed the top. hook link from so there we go that just gives us a reasonable size hook I think that's probably around about a size 2.0 so let's grab one of these worms and um, right okay so we've got a reasonable size worm there and let's try threading it on the hook bearing in mind that we know full well that were that still frozen and baggy it would just gather at the hook bend and would be pretty much useless without being whipped on and straight away it's interesting that that there's still the texture of of the worm you know it's kind of frozen worm you they feel quite licoricey quite tarry um, and you can still get a sense of that Um, well, there you go, guys. Um, that's threaded up absolutely fine. Uh, didn't have to whip it. I just take that little, what I normally do, take that little sand tail off. Um, and that seems to be on the hook absolutely fine. Um, it doesn't feel like it's going to bag down. I mean, time will tell. Uh, actually sticking them in the water um, and see how much of a difference that makes. Uh, it may be that when they get wet they kind of sag down a bit but then you know a relatively fresh worm will do that eventually anyway. Uh, but there you go, it seems to work. Um, <coughs> so, <coughs> still taste it. Um, so yeah, I would recommend that you put something over your mouths um, you certainly don't want to breathe in that smoke. It's disgusting. Um, but it does seem to work. But it really, literally, only takes a few seconds. So you do need to keep an eye on them. Otherwise, you will end up just cooking them. Um, but that certainly seems to that certainly seems to work. Um, I will be giving it a go with the frozen blacks when I'm um, fishing next week. Uh, so I will be reporting back as part of the um, the session videos that I'll be doing while I'm away. Um, and I'll let you know how I got on. But uh, certainly my um, my impression is, see that's still really quite, pulling that off, that's really quite licorice -y and and I mean that's still quite, st I've just pulled that off the hook. Look, it hasn't torn at all. I actually feel like, you know, sod it, I could put that back in the thing, freeze that and use that as a bait. And that's just been on and off a hook. So it really has made it quite tough. Um, Blimey. Okay. I'm actually reasonably impressed. Uh, genuinely, genuinely. Look at that. Standing up rigid. 
that really works. So give it a go, guys. But for God's sake, don't do it when your wife's at home. Okay, <clears throat> that's it from me uh, for this one. Um, I've got uh, uh, another little cookery video I'm going to do later on today. I'm going to make uh, fisherman's pie, uh, which I'll film and I'll put on. So those of you like to um, see the odd cookery ones, and not as popular as their fishing sessions, but um, you know, what the hell. Uh, but then I'm away next week. I don't have access to the internet, but I will be doing lots of filming and hopefully at least I'll, I'll get a couple of sessions um, up on YouTube shortly after that. Um, hopefully with some fish on camera. The problem is it's February, so um, you know it's not the greatest month for sea fishing. So I'll be scratching around probably, um, trying to get a few dab maybe, and, um, and we'll see what else is about off the Norfolk coast. Uh, not fished there before, so, well, not this time of year. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, see how it goes. Okay, guys, take care of yourselves, um, keep fishing, and I'll catch up with you again soon.